Welcome to the Gary Dunn Show for October 21st, 2019. I'm your host, Gary Smith. And as always on today's show, we're going to talk with the head man of Vulcan football, Coach Gary Dunn, about this past weekend's uh, big win up on the shores of Lake Erie against Gannon. And then we're going to look back at last year's game against this coming week's opponent, the Mercerous Lakers. And we'll look at scores, standings, highlights, uh, anything else. I mean, we're live on uh, internet right now. So hi, YouTube. Uh, so shoot me a text on... Uh, on Twitter, we'll ask some yeah. questions. We'll, sure. We'll do all. We'll do it all. This is a, an interactive and fun <laughs> show. But first of all, Coach, uh, welcome. Great uh, great day on Saturday. Um, great trip for you and your team to Erie. Yeah, nice trip to Erie. thought the guys handled the trip really well. We, we kind of used the same MO that we did a few weeks ago against Edinburgh. We, we left uh, Friday afternoon, let our guys go to some classes in the morning, as many classes as we can, and then head up, got to practice a local high school up there, and, and then you know went over to the hotel, had a nice dinner, some meetings, and and woke up ready to play on, on Saturday morning, but it was kind of a, a nice, easy trip. You know, traveling the PSAC is, is great. I was talking to some of my former colleagues that were traveling back from a different game in Connecticut. They had about <laughs> nine hours, and we had about three, so two and a half, so it was, it was a good weekend. Well, I tell you what, when you see the scores later for the PSAC, it seemed like it was a convention in, in Erie because we were there, Slippery Rock was there, um, and Edinburgh, of course, is just down the road, so it seemed like half the, half the West was in 20 miles of one another, but uh, the only game we all care about and, and you know good knowledgeable football fans should care about should be what the red and black uh took part in on saturday and coach like i said it was just you know a beautiful afternoon to play football and then I, I thought really your team just offensively and defense just put a stamp on that game from from the get-go yeah I, I was happy you know obviously we got some things to clean up um and, and some things to improve upon but uh, our effort was there our guys played hard i thought they were ready to play i thought our coaches did a really good job during the week with the plan that they had on both sides of the ball and it's just about lining up and playing and, and playing the next play. I was, I was happy with some of the things we did. You know, we talked about, you know, playing the next play, and I thought we did that, you know, to start the game. They got right down the field and score. And, and, you know, I talked with Coach Craig, our defense coordinator, earlier in the week. Some of the things they do in the motions and the formations, sometimes it takes a little while for a defense to settle in, you know, and they, they hit us with a, with a bubble off of motion. We could have played a little bit better, but was happy that, that we dropped that after the first series and, and continued to play. And, as you see, the game went on. Our defense really took over that game after that first series. I think they had 70 yards in the mm -hmm. first series. I think they finished with maybe close to 200 yards total offense. You take that bubble play out and the long pass play in the second half, and, and we might hold them under 100 yards. So I um, thought the defense really just practiced what we're preaching is playing the next play and getting off the field on third downs. And I thought the field possession of the game with our special teams and our defense, the offense had operated on a lot of short fields on Saturday and then took advantage. We got to clean some things up in the red zone, kicked a couple field goals that I'd rather score touchdowns. <laughs> but at the same time, anytime you have the ball and you're putting points on the board, that's the goal. So, you know, I'm sure we'll have more questions about the offense or the defense, but that's kind of how, how I saw it unfold. Yeah, and that's always one of the, the, the interesting things watching, you know, in the press box or the truck is just seeing how your staff and everybody, uh, like the changes that happen because, you, I mean, at the base of it, you know, football's a reaction, read and react game. And, you know, after that first series, Gannon, it's always fun to see what, what changes are made. And like you said, the changes that your defense made, I mean, it was like throwing a blanket on a, on a grease fire. There was no, no, no room to breathe. Well, they did a nice job. Our defense is running to the football right now and, and, and playing with a lot of confidence and a lot of energy. And when they get rolling, it's really fun to watch. Uh, you know, didn't really have to make any adjustments, just had to play it a little bit better. And, and I thought our guys did that. You know, we created turnovers. You know, Noah Dilla had a big interception. We had Julian Cox always seems to be around the ball, had a, a fumble recovery where he just stepped out of bounds and, and, and took a touchdown off the board there. Then he got another one later. So when you're creating turnovers like that um, on defense, it's, it, it's obviously making your offensive life a lot easier. And on the offensive side, yeah, it was, you know, great sailing for, you know, it seemed like the uh, if you're playing a video game, all the pass plays were coming up great because a lot of touchdown passes, uh, Tyson Hill, Noah Mitchell were connecting on a, on a different level on Saturday. Yeah, they uh, Gannon does some different things. You know, they, they they were playing a little bit of man coverage early, and you know we checked a couple plays and had some big plays with, with them in zero coverage. And and anytime you play zero coverage, that's the that's the risk. And uh, you know we had one long one called back to a, a penalty, uh, which was a good call, but you know. We got him out of playing that cover zero because it, it was very difficult to guard our outside guys and our receivers. And Noah was doing a good job of delivering the football. I thought we ran the ball 
well enough. And, and when teams are playing cover zero, it's it's difficult to run. They were basically saying, we're going to take the run. You're going to have to throw to beat us. And that's what we did. And I tell you what, the uh, it's always the unsung hero on the offense is the offensive line. And, you know, once again, they did a great job of keeping no protected and also opening some lanes for, for the offensive to, to run and run the clock out when it was time to Kind of get this game on the bar, yeah. Road, yep. right? Yeah, no, the O line played well. There's still, again, in every position, things that we've got to clean up and we got to continue to grow and, and get better every week. But I thought they played well. I think we gave up maybe a sack or two. One I thought was a covered sack. One was kind of a bad read um, or, a, or a missed route on, on the receiver's part. So I thought the O line did a nice job. The backs did a good job in protection. And, you know, just playing assignment football for us. And, and we've really tried to simplify things the last few weeks and let our guys make plays with things that they know that we that we do well. And uh, since we've done that, I thought we've we've improved and, and you know, we got a tough test this week. Marcy Harris is a physical bunch that gives you a lot of different looks, a lot of different fronts. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a minute. But, you know, we're continuing to grow offensively and, and we got to continue to do that to, to play our best football. And coach, you kind of touched on it well, but the special teams early in the segment. But I mean, and I know you said you'd rather score touchdowns anytime we can. I think any coach in the country would rather put seven on the board than, than three. But it, how great is it for, for you as a coach? You have two specialists that are very young and, you know, you're not hesitating to go out there and say, okay, let's kick a field goal. We have faith in you. Or, you know, you know your punter is going to either pin them back or, or get you out of a bad situation. Yeah, Keaton Hare, uh, our kicker, and Joey Hood, our punter, are both doing a really good job. And they kind of shared the kickoff duties on Saturday. Uh, they're both doing a really good job. Keaton is is really growing as the, as the year goes. Um, well, he, he has a lot more confidence right now. Um, you know, up there with the the wind wasn't really a factor, but we you know we're trying to judge that that position where where is it good to go for it and where is it good to, to kick mm -hmm. the field goal. And we thought we had some some great spots to kick field goals, and, and he was down the middle on both of them, uh, which was good. And then Joey's becoming a real weapon in the punt game. He uh, He's doing a really good job of getting the ball off and hitting it high, and, and you know our coverage unit's doing a nice job. But that's a lot about the kick, the protection, and the kick, and you know that's something that we're, we're continuing to work but and get better at. And I see us improving in those phases. And enough talking about it for me and coach. Let's look. Let's let uh, the fans at home look at the highlights from this past week, past weekend's game at Gannon. Then after the break, there's actually two breaks. Uh, there's no highlights from last year's game at Mercer, and fans of Vulcan football will huh. remember. And coach and I will talk about why there are no highlights from last year's game, but you're watching The Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV Sports and live on YouTube on CUTV Sports 1. 7 nothing, Gannon here. If you're just joining us as Mitchell has Brown to his right, he's dropping back to throw once again. He's going to dump this off on a screen. Look to Brown. Brown's going to prance his way on into the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcan. Keith has it. He's going to fake the handoff, and he's going to throw this one across the middle. It's going to be intercepted, and he's going to head the other way. It looks like Noah Dillo grabbing that one. Brought down to the California 45. Right place, right time, as California's interception streak continues here. Mitchell surveys, dances around in the pocket, goes high with this one. Tyson Hill right on the line. He's able to bring that one in. Touchdown, Vulcans. Mitchell waiting for the snap. He's got it. He's going to throw this one, feeling some pressure. He lets it fly towards the end zone. Going high for the Tyson Hill with an athletic grab as he falls his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans. Three near, one far. Here it is. He surveys, going into the end zone. Went high. And who else but once again, Tyson Hill. Touchdown, Vulcans. Fourth down, it's going to be a jumbo play. Mitchell fakes it. He's going to run. He's got all the space in the room, and he's going to walk right on into the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans. Dale with Cousin this time. Fakes the hand up to Cousin. Dale rolling to the opposite side. He's throwing this one into the end zone. He's got his target. Touchdown, Vulcans. Add another one to the score column here. Jackson Daughtery getting on the board. Too near, one far, and he lost the fumble there. It's going to be dropped down to round 20. Still can't fall on. Now California's got it. It's Julian Cox into the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans, as he couldn't fall on top of it.
I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Consider the future, your future. At California University of Pennsylvania, you can build your life your way because we believe in you. We invest in you, empower you to create the future you envision. We give you the tools and teaching so you can rise up and achieve. Don't settle for someone else's vision of you. Build you at CalU. Visit us at calu.edu. Colin, what's wrong, man? I just don't know how my family back home in Millersburg, Pennsylvania can watch our stuff down here. Well, they could follow us on Twitter, or they could like us on Facebook. Yeah, but what about our sports? How can they watch those? They can watch it live on our YouTube channel. Thanks, man. You're welcome. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Have you seen the new Cal U Vulcan logo around? Have you wondered where to get gear featuring it? Then go to calvulcans.com and click shop. Log on and browse a full selection of men's shirts, women's shirts, pullovers, hoodies, and more. All items feature customization with the new Cal U Vulcan logo and wordmark. The site also features a full selection of hats, tailgating items, and accessories. Don't be the last person to sport new Cal U Vulcan gear. Go to calvalkins.com today. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show. And you just saw a commercial for uh, the shop on uh, calvalkins.com. I'm wearing a, where's that, right there. From there, so I implore all Vulcans fans to go to calvalkins.com and uh, get some new gear with the new logo. And, and at, on uh, Saturday, uh, we're sorry, say Gannon, you know, we were just talking how intimate of a setting it is. But, you know, so you interact with a lot more of the fans. But there's a lot more of the, you're seeing a lot more of the new logos out, which, yeah, is, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. Fans had it. I saw it all over the place, which is, which is good. I know our guys like it, you know, with the new gear that we were able to provide this year. It's, uh, yeah, I like it. It's definitely moving on. So go, go <laughs> online and you can uh, dress like me and Coach. That's and, uh, right. Halloween's coming up, so maybe that's a Halloween costume idea for some people out there. Uh, but if you were paying attention, there were no highlights from Mercer. So that's because last year's game, Coach, was one of the, I know it's the first time I ever experienced it. I don't know about you. You've been coaching and playing football a lot longer than I have. Not longer, but you've been involved in the game longer. Yeah. But uh, I think three or four lightning delays, and then the game was postponed to the next day, and we had people that had to work the next day. So we had a pool coverage, but you guys were stuck there in Erie for pretty much 72 hours. And first had that time ever in happened? my career, no. Uh, you know, you've, you've had some delays and, and some weather delays where you're going to the locker room for an hour, hour and a half or so, but not four delays in a game, and then gets postponed till. Uh, Sunday morning, and you got to find you know 
a bunch of hotel rooms and how you're going to feed 80 people on the road in, in short. But Mercyhurst administration was really good with us up there last year. In fact, I talked to their head coach yesterday, and uh, he said, hey, no lightning down here this week. And I said, I'm going to try and do everything I can, but we got lights. We're going to finish on Saturday night. I don't care if it's 2 in the morning. But, you know, our, our kids reacted well to that. You know, we, we played, what, about two – little, little – Maybe over, two quarters. Maybe two quarters, a little under halftime. We had to come out and finish the first half, took a five-minute break, played the second half, got away with a big win on the road last year. Uh, but, yeah, something that I'll never forget if I ever write a book on, on my time as a coach, that, that'll definitely be a chapter on, on that deal. But – the kids handled it well, and, and, you know, hopefully we don't have to ever go through that again. Well, one of the craziest things for me is it seemed like just the timing of the delays, because the rule is if you see lightning, it's 30 minutes. So the delays hit, and it was beautiful weather for a half hour. Then play for about five minutes, lightning, a little bit of rain, and then beautiful weather. So it was just one of those, everyone in the press box was looking at each other. We kept looking back, because you could see where we were in the press box, the locker room, you see the refs come tell you another half hour, and everyone go back in and, yeah. and just kind of deal with it. But that was a year ago. This is this year, and uh, coaches, I know you like to say uh, it's pretty much a one-game season from here on out, and the next Good. game on that schedule is, is Mercyhurst, and they come down here this year, and um, we were talking off camera on, on what do they do? I know you said they're a little bit young this year, but it seems like their DNA is always defense and big yeah. plays. But is, is that hold true this so year? So defensively, they're going to give you a lot of different looks. They, they base out of a 3 force games, very similar to our defense. Uh, but they'll play some even front. They, they throw just about every coverage at the book at you. They're going to try and leverage you up. They're going to make sure that they're, they're, they're stopping to the run, um, you know, and trying to get you in long down and distances. And, but they, they do a nice job defensively of changing things up. So a lot of it for us is going to be playing assignment football, making sure that we've got our, our assignments down, who we're blocking, how we're blocking it, um, and then adjusting on the back end of the different coverages. They'll play just about every coverage and every look that you can imagine, and they do a really good job of it. A um, little bit younger on defense. I know they're playing some young defensive backs, but they're a physical bunch. That's what kind of jumps off the tape at your safeties. You know, if they line up in their cover four, two safety shell, and they're, and they're gonna run support, they're gonna come down and run support. Uh, so we, for us, it's really about taking care of Cal U. We, we've done a better job in the last couple of weeks of, of taking care of the football. You know, and, and when our defense is getting as many turnovers as they're getting and we're taking care of the football, obviously that gives us a better chance. Uh, you flip offensively, and, and they're probably one of the, the only teams left in our league, you know, us included, that, that'll run a tight end two-back set. Um, you know, their quarterback's a fifth-year senior. It seems like he's been around forever. I don't know if he has an office up there or, or, <laughs> or what it is, but he seems like he's been around forever. They've got a really dynamic tailback that they like to get the ball to. They'll move him around, they'll throw it to him, they'll, they'll, they'll split him out, they'll hand it to him, they'll screen it to him. Um, he's a really, really dynamic player. They've got a couple receivers that can go get it. So, you know, they're putting up some points in, in the last few weeks, you know. Um, we've, we've kind of followed them a little bit on the schedule of, uh, and seeing them the last couple weeks before this week. Um, and they're doing a nice job offensively moving the football. Um, so, you know, it'll be another test, but it's more about taking care of our business for us and, and making sure that we're doing what we need to do to be successful. And yeah. that starts with a, a great meeting tonight and a great practice tonight. And uh, you kind of took the words out of my mouth there because it always seems I was going to bring up before you flipped over the offense. It seems like they're a team that, you know, if you look, you can't really pinpoint, is this a passing team? Is this an option team? Is this a run team? Because it seems like, you know, they can adjust to whatever because we've seen games with them that, you know, they'll throw the ball over the place. We'll see, we've seen games in years that they've run the ball and, yep. you know, it's the same staff for years. So it's always interesting to see what, you know, again, we talked about earlier, game of adjustments, see what adjustments are made. Really good, game. you know, offensively, they do a really good job of putting pressure on you as far as shifts and motions and, and trading the tight end and, and changing, you know, strengths of the formation. So it's, it's for us, it's a, it's a lot of, we got to be lined up right. And then when they move, we got to adjust and line up right. Um, you know, they do a little more shotgun this year than, than they have in past. Um, on some passing downs, they've kind of expanded that part, that that part of their game. But you know, they put pressure on you. With, with you know, some some teams do it with speed and, and spreading the field. They they do it a lot with shifts and motions and and making sure that you're lined up right and taking advantage of of what they see when you're not. And I tell you what, every game is important. And this game is the next one on the schedule. It's at home, so Falcon fans, uh, come on out Saturday, one o'clock. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the weather because. Right now, it looks like it could be a good weekend, so I don't want to jinx it. We were talking. Good, I haven't checked the weather yet. Well, I was talking to some to of the hear. people again, and they're like, we don't want to jinx it either because when we looked out and there was no you know, clouds in the sky, I'm like, we're not going to say anything for the rest of the year. But come on out Saturday, 1 o'clock. Uh, but before we talk and go through all that, we're going to look back and just wrap up 
the past week and everything going in the PSAC because this is Coach's favorite time of the Absolutely. show. And we get to see a lot of graphics. So let's look at this past weekend's action in both the PSAC West and the PSAC East, starting in the West. We talked about Caillou and Gannon. Uh, IEP over at Clarion, 59-21. Uh, uh, Slip Rock was at Edinburgh, and that was a game that was close. We were watching this in the press box, Colin and myself, um, and it was very close going into the fourth quarter. So Edinburgh um, hanging it tough there, and getting, uh, but ultimately falling at home with Slip Rock. And then Seton Hill, uh, two wins in a row um, over Erie Schools, 30-20. to 20, and, Yeah, playing well right now. Yeah, and they're a team that we see in a couple weeks. But that's what happened in the west, and now switching over to the other side of the Susquehanna River. In the, uh, in the East, probably the game of the week we talked about last week, Westchester and Shepard, the Ramble. Um, Shepard holding serve at home, 35-23 over previously undefeated Westchester. Uh, Shippensburg beating Millersville, 27-0. Um, uh, Bloomsburg with a big win, upset win a little bit at East Stroudsburg, 22-17. And then Quitstown going up to Lock Haven, winning 35-12. And after those scores, that shuffles the standings thusly as we look at the standings. And... Um, Really no, no change at the top, Slip Rock, IP Calu, but you see Seton Hill uh, coming up two straight wins. Um, we still have Seton Hill, uh, Mercer this weekend, and Slip Rock on the schedule. If we slip, flip over the PSAC East, uh, Quitstown remaining undefeated, 4-0, 7-0, and then Westchester and Shepard, 3-1, 3-1. So uh, both races, Coach, tightening up at the yeah. top. Yeah, absolutely, 4-0. Quitstown's playing really well, got a, got a good win at, at Lock Haven. Um, I was anxious to see that Shepherd Westchester score. You know, I know coming down the road here, I think Westchester and Kutztown play. Not sure when. Hopefully, your next graphic might tell me that. I, I think uh, I think the next graphic will help us uh, <laughs> figure it out because I can't, I just typed them a little bit and I bit to go and I can't remember who plays who. But this upcoming week uh, in the PSAC, the last weekend of football in October for 2019, it seems so weird to say, uh, but the main event, uh, as we all like to say, Mercer Caillou, one o'clock at Adamson Stadium. Uh, and then I'm trying to look for another great game there. Just go through the West. Edinburgh at Seton Hill and Greensburg. Uh, Clarion over at Slippery Rock. Gannon at IEP. Stroudsburg at Westchester. Lockhaven at Bloom. Shepherd at Millersville. And Shippensburg at Kutztown. So that Westchester uh, Kutztown game still coming up. But yeah. if you're a football fan, you have a whole, whole, whole slate of football yeah. between noon and uh, 2 05. I actually see that Edinburgh Seton Hill. Seton Hill's playing really well. He's throwing the ball around a bunch, putting some scores. Edinburgh's you know, in every game. And, 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 and struck, you know, obviously played Slippery Rock really tough. So, you know, got a lot of respect for those guys. They keep playing hard. And then that shippensburg Kutztown game, kind of a rivalry game. Shippensburg righted the ship a little bit, got some wins under the belt. So good football matchups. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you want to, if you're a football fan, this is the time of year as we're coming down to crunch time. As I just mentioned, it's the last weekend of football in October. Um, but definitely come out to Adamson Stadium, 1 o'clock. Um, if you can't be there, have a note from the doctor or whatever. You, there's only like two or three excuses you can get to, to miss a Vulcan game. But come on out. Uh, but if you can't be there, WCA will have the game live on the radio. CTV Sports will have it live on CTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. And if for some reason those two different media don't suit your fancy, CalVulcans.com, Mike Kuyper, and Alex King and his staff will have live stats. So once again, Coach, no, no, no reason excuses. not to, to be. Come on to Adamson Stadium. And wear your red and black. Uh, like I said, there's only a few more home games left this season. It's just hard to believe that. Flying by. We're talking that you know this is the last week and next week we're in November. But uh, coach, any final thoughts? Any 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 other pitches to get uh, get people up to the stadium this it's Saturday? It's going to be a great day at Adams Stadium. The weather's going to be good. Tailgating will be going on. You know we had a nice homecoming crowd. We're 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 doing a good job, but we need your support at Adams Stadium. Our guys are playing hard. It's going to be a big one. And you know the rest of the way we need we need everybody's help. Yeah, I'm going to paraphrase what our uh, priest used to say at church. Uh, you know we had a big crowd at homecoming. So they use the uh, he used the ex example of uh, Christmas Eve. There's a lot of people at Christmas Eve. Come the next week. So a lot of exactly. people at homecoming come this week. So exactly. for Coach Dunn, I know we've got some alumni coming in uh, from out of time. One of my former uh, alumni from Arizona is coming in. We got one from Philadelphia coming in. So we'll have a good crowd. And you always have a, a great crowd on that sideline with alumni. It seems like it seems like you're running for public office or something. <laughs> always surrounding. I was surrounded by alumni from the, the past, and it looked like there was a pretty good. Turnout up in Erie. Yeah, this week, we so. had Will Brazil, former kicker here, uh, now lives in Nashville, was was at the game, and then of course we had two of our alumni that coach at Gannon, that were on our 16 team. Uh, Zach Moorhead and Taylor Nickaser got into coaching, and, and those guys were there, so it was good to see them. I didn't like the good clothes they were wearing, but it was. I told them I said I don't like seeing you guys and that stuff, but good for them. They're doing a nice job up there, and, and happy for those guys. And it was always good to see Will. So need more alumni back involved. 
I tell you what, next next week we might play the seven degrees of uh, separation of alumni. Just see where they are and see who comes yeah. back. But uh, definitely come up to Addison State at 1 o'clock. Uh, for Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. You've been watching The Gary Dunn Show live on CTV Sports 1 and on CTV. We'll see you next week.